Hey everybody, Dave here. I hope you're having an awesome day. So this week, I am gonna work on this Mandalorian speeder bike. I think with a few modifications, we can make something pretty cool out of this. So if you're following me and you haven't seen the Mystery Shack posted yet, I'm still working on it, but it's turning out really cool. So hit that notification bell, subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. And really quick, I wanna show you something that I found. I got this at a store called Second and Charles and they sell books, but they also have uh, recycled or Legos, donated Legos, and they sell them by the ounce. And I was digging around in the Lego bin and I found this really cool little backhoe caterpillar that somebody must have built. And I thought I have to buy that. It's just really sweet. So anyways, uh, let's get to the build. I think we're gonna do something awesome this week. <laughs> Okay, so on the speeder bike, there are some little accessories that click into these different spots, and there's this weird hole here, there's a weird hole here, there's a hole on the top, and also this is filled in with solid plastic, so on the series it actually is a negative space, so I think to make it look cooler, I'm going to fill these holes in and try and cut this hole out, so yeah, let's give that a shot. Time for a little operation. Got my model snips out and I'm just trimming out this area. I was gonna try and cut out a hole just between the two, but it's the, the plastic was just thick enough that it was kind of a pain in the neck, so um, I'm going to try and not cut my finger off. All right, that turned out pretty great, and hey look, I still got all my digits. Yeah, these are the holes that I was talking to you about earlier. I'm going to just trim those off with an X-Acto knife. I'm going to trim them as close to the edge as I can so it's less sanding and stuff. So, And I kept looking at it I thought, should I use Millie Putt to fill this? That way I don't have to bake in the oven. Um, but it just takes so long to dry. So I thought, I'm going to use Sculpey, but I have to bake it in the oven. So I thought, well, maybe if I pop these saddlebags off, That'll help me for him having to cook the whole bike in the oven and I can just cook the bags. And I forgot about the hole in the top of the bike, so I did end up having to throw the whole thing in the oven. But I'm just struggling here with these bags. I'm not really worried about the connecting points because I am going to super glue the bags back on, so um, no big deal there. Now, in the back of the bike, I was using some reference photos from what I'm guessing is probably a Star Wars celebration. There was a Mandalorian speeder bike there so and the back of the bike has this open area so I went ahead and just cut all this out so it felt a little bit closer to the photo so there's my sculpty I did find the sculpty at Goodwill for $1.99 and it was somebody had taken like maybe an inch off of the upper left corner so score and uh, I'm just filling these holes here I'm gonna bake these in the oven and this actually works out pretty great so I'm just going to finish smoothing these out and get them ready to bake. Yeah, so here's that hole in the top that I was talking about. And I did have to bake the whole bike in the oven and it did get a little floppy like a spaghetti noodle, but I just ran the bike under cold water and it uh, stiffened right back up. So here are the saddlebags out of the oven, sanding these things down. And in the end, I was really pleased with how smooth the transition was and you would have never even known there was holes in there. And I think that's the whole point of doing this extra work and just little attention to details I think make everything look really great in the end so I'm really pleased with how this turned out so again just looking at my reference photo there was these little rivets or holes I'm not sure what they were they have rust kind of dripping off them so I just kind of marked out just eyeballed it and then I took my little um, little hole punch there and just kind of punched into the plastic some holes and I think it gives a nice illusion. Now here I am messing around with this polystyrene. Um, I don't know the size of it off the top of my head but uh, for this piece that I cut out so I'm just trying to glue it. I got glue on it. It stuck to my finger. I was kind of really struggling with it. It kept falling off so I thought okay I'm gonna glue this on <laughs> and um, use my baking soda trick that I've you know seen other makers use so I, I glued this on globbed up the glue pretty good and it held but it looked 
awful. There was these like giant globs of glue. So as I was doing the second one, I was a little bit more careful, kind of held it in there. It worked out a lot nicer and it was really clean. So I did actually end up going back, recutting out the other one, just because I couldn't stand how gross that giant glob looked. The toy itself was like tan and brown, but actually in the reference photos, the bike is more of like this gray metal. So I just primed this with my gray. I hit it with a little tiny coat of metallic and then a little coat of white. And I think it gives me a really nice base. So I'm gonna just spend some time and build up with paint and washes and uh, go from there. So I'm just laying down some black. I'll do this on the handles and then I'll do it on the exhaust and then we'll just keep moving forward with the paint job. All right, so this is coming along pretty nice. I've got my styrene tubes on the bottom and the original plastic here, but it is this like rubbery, plastic and it keeps deforming and kind of bending in and it's kind of driving me nuts. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip this off and actually glue in a more rigid polystyrene tube there. I think that's going to, I don't know, I think it's just going to look better because this is, every time it deforms I like reshape it and it just kind of goes right back to that deformation and I, I don't love it. So I'm going to snip those off and rework that a little bit. So the chrome is not just like a straight up chrome, so I'm using this little metallic copper and kind of adding just a little touch of kind of grunge and rot grime. And the seat, the seat is almost kind of this like tan canvas with a little bit of green. So I'm putting this base on, like at first it's gonna look really yellow and green, but after I put some washes on it, trust me, it's gonna turn out just fine. So this is kind of more of a base coat and then I'll do some washes over the top of that do the same for the back of the bike, the packs that are on there. I'm going to use this light tan first, and it's a little too light right now, but again, I'm going to do a, a bunch of little washes over it, and I think it really, uh, this will work as a nice base, so uh, in the end it's going to look pretty great. The reference photo that I was using from the Star Wars Celebration, the, these upper part of the handlebars actually have kind of a little bit of a white paint on it, so that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just doing a little bit of dry brushing just to show a touch of it. I don't want it to be like straight up white, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, time for washi, washi, washi. Uh, these are so great. So washes are just really thinly diluted. Um, it, a pigment that you can put on there and it really adds dimension to your project. So I'm going to use some black Nuln Oil, I'm using a brown Citadel wash, and then I'm going to use this Vallejo Rust, and I'm just going to work at this thing until it feels right to me. There's really no rhyme or reason, it's just kind of a, an aesthetic visual thing that you're looking for, so get at it, have fun, and washy washy! Now that my washes are done, I'm going to take this Citadel kind of metallic silver and I'm just going to hit a few of the edges just to give a little bit of metallic uh, chips and dings just because this bike is used. And I think to me this adds just a really nice depth to the project. 
All right, we're to the end here, and I've got this clear little stand. Um, it came with the pram, um, but I think I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom here and use this stand to display this thing. So I think that's going to be pretty cool. Oh, wow, I almost forgot. I got these two cannons here in the front, and whenever you have a toy with some sort of gun or cannon, if you're able to, put a little hole in there and kind of bore that out a little bit. It just makes it look so much cooler. Just poke a little hole there. I'm gonna take this X-Acto knife and get that in there. And I'm just gonna drill that out just a tiny bit. And I think that's gonna add a nice little touch. Okay, that was a super fun build and just a couple of simple modifications and I think it turned out really cool. So let's take some turnaround shots of this thing, check it out. And as always, it is a great day to be a toy nerd. Have a great one.